Today on the Minuteman Moment, find out why the FBI was secretly going door to door to pressure Americans into giving up their Second Amendment rights by signing themselves up for the Knicks list. Hey guys, it's Phil with GOA, and I have got a breaking story for you that I think by the time this video goes up, it'll have been out there for at least a day. Here it is, exclusive. The FBI secretly pressured Americans to waive their gun rights. All right, we gave this story to the Daily Caller News Foundation. They've been great on putting good two-way information out there for us. And uh, I just want to get right into it. Here's sort of the headlines. The FBI provided forms to Americans between 2016 and 2019 to voluntarily relinquish their rights to own, buy, or even use firearms according to internal documents and communications. All right, so how did we get this information? How did GOA come across it? It was because of a FOIA request, Freedom of Information Act. That we did after a great article that came out in Ammo Land a few years ago. Every time that these FOIA requests come out, there's always new questions that arise. Ammo Land had a great article about the existence of this document, and what GOA did is they got a FOIA out there basically talking about the nuts and bolts about how this program was working. Let's go into it a little bit more. Rob Olson, he's one of our lawyers. He sums this up perfectly. What he says is, we are into pre-crime. But the more I talk about this, the more you're gonna figure out that it's not really pre-crime because what's going on here is the FBI pressuring people to give up their rights for not having committed crimes. All right, here it is from the opening of the article. The FBI secretly pressured Americans into signing forms that relinquished their rights to own, purchase, or even use firearms according to a trove of internal documents. At least 15 people between 2016 and 2019 signed secret forms which ask signatories to declare themselves as either a danger to themselves or others or lacking mental capacity adequately to contract or manage their lives. We've seen this before in one other instance where the federal government dumped a bunch of people into the NICS list because they had somebody taking care of their finances. This was in the VA. And so the Fed said, well, if you can't handle your finances, you clearly aren't mentally stable enough to have a gun. There's a whole bunch of problems with that. The first is, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, can you willingly give away your rights? The second is, can you have your rights taken away from you without being adjudicated a mental defective in a court? The answer is no. The third is, is any of this even legal? And what this great article talks about is even by the own unconstitutional standards of the federal government and the laws they've passed, Gun Control Act, NICS, all of that, background checks, even this doesn't seem to pass muster. Okay, and here's what the form says. So what basically what happens is a couple of FBI agents knock on your front door and they ask you to sign this form to give away your rights. And here's what it says. The form specifies that signatories will be permanently registered with the FBI's NIC system, which the form states would legally bar signatories from being able to purchase, to possess, or to use any firearm. It's and the article goes on, it is unclear what exact criteria the FBI used to identify signatories, but some forms include bureau notes detailing ongoing investigations. This is what I was talking about. We need more FOIAs out there. We don't know what the criteria is being used for the FBI to go to these people's houses. It seems to indicate here that there's some kind of ongoing investigation, but if you're investigating them, why then go to their homes and ask them to not be able to purchase a firearm. Maybe the crimes they're being investigated for have nothing to do with firearms. We just don't know. And that's why we're gonna to have to keep digging. As best as we can tell, and as best as the Daily Caller News Foundation can tell, many of the signatories allegedly made violent threats in online chat rooms, in person, or on social media platforms. So this is what I meant by saying it's another level of pre-crime. It's not even saying you know, we think you're gonna commit a crime. It's sort of taking your words, not even your actions, and using them against you to ask you to strip yourself of your own gun rights. So while they were researching the story, the Daily Caller asked the FBI to comment on it, of course, and here's what they had to say. The NICS self-submission form was created to provide an avenue for individuals to self-report to the NICS section when individuals felt they were a danger to themselves or others. What does that even mean? 
if you feel, if you're so mentally competent that you think you can sign a form to give away your rights, aren't you probably just mentally competent enough to not buy a gun if you think you're so dangerous? Or what's more likely going on here is that FBI agents show up to your door and frankly, you're so intimidated by these folks. I mean, they are the feds. They have almost limitless powers, both constitutional and for the most part, unconstitutional powers that the average guy is going to feel that he has to sign this. I mean, I'm not reading anything about a lawyer being present in all of this. I'm not reading anything about uh, these folks being married, made aware of their rights. This is just FBI at your front door telling you to sign something. A lot of folks are going to feel intimidated by that. Now, it makes me think about that guy in Florida a couple weeks ago who had, I think it was ATF, coming to his front door to talk about his solvent trap, and he just basically told him to go pound. And he understood his rights. He understood he should have a lawyer present. He understood he doesn't have to sign anything without uh, legal representation helping him out. He did it the right way, but I don't know if he's the majority of all the people who are out there. Obviously, a lot of us try to stay up to date on what our rights are, but I think the average person just simply isn't. And I think the fact that this form existed and people signed it is proof that most folks don't know what their rights are. There's another part of the article where it goes through a few of the instances of the individuals that were approached by the FBI to sign this Nix form. And it gives sort of some color to why the FBI might have been at their front door. Here's one, just one particular story. In 2017, there was one case in which the FBI was advised of a Facebook conversation where a man allegedly threatened to shoot up a church, according to bureau notes, the bureau notes that are on the FOIA request that we got. The man denied making the threats in interviews at his home, telling the FBI he did not want to kill anyone and has never possessed a firearm and has no desire to possess a firearm, note show. Nevertheless, the man filled out the form waiving his gun rights. I think that's the perfect example of what's going on here. Just based off the information we have, and we do need more, this guy doesn't seem like a threat to anybody. But the FBI went to his door and pressured him into signing this form. Okay, Reed March with the Second Amendment blog perfectly sums up the point I was making earlier. There is an implicit pressure anytime the FBI is asking you to sign a form. There is naturally an adversarial relationship between everyday people and the FBI. The real reality is that when you're in that moment and there's FBI at your door, you're going to feel about this small next to them. And that's why people were signing these forms. And there's a lot of unanswered questions about these forms as well. When were they created? Who thought it was a good idea? Who gave legal sign off? How many people in total were visited? Did the FBI threaten anybody for not signing it? Uh, where did the idea begin with to do something like this? Did any other agencies within the federal government get a copy of this form to have people sign? Here's what the article says. Records do not show when the FBI form was created, who created it, and whether or not it was distributed to federal agencies. However, the form was apparently reviewed by legal counsel. An FBI employee told a colleague in November of 2016, email obtained by the Daily Caller News Foundation. That is the most important part of this. Some lawyer somewhere thought this was legal. But this article does answer one of the questions about what other federal agencies might have received these forms. One of the FBI employees said they shared the forms with agencies who use these forms like the Secret Service and Social Security. The Secret Service declined the Daily Caller News Foundation's request for comment and the Social Security Administration did not respond. First off, there's maybe a bigger problem here. How do federal agencies like this even get away with a no comment. Another little part of this form is that it has a space for a physician to basically bless the entire process that a person has said, yeah, I'm too dangerous to own a gun, so I'm going to sign my rights away. The interesting part is that John Harris, who's a lawyer who heads the Tennessee Firearms Association, said, I don't see how a licensed physician could ever competently sign the declaration that the person has the mental capacity to voluntarily execute the agreement but lacks the mental capacity to adequately contract or manage the details of my life. Basically he's saying, there's no doctor in the world that could say you're too dangerous to own a gun, but, too danger but not dangerous enough to not be committed to an institution or not be too dangerous to be adjudicated a mental defective. On its own terms, this FBI form on the next list 
is a contradiction. And like I said before, it's an open question of even within the terms of the unconstitutional legal framework of the Gun Control Act of whether this FBI NICS form complies with the Gun Control Act. The Gun Control Act holds that someone may be barred from owning guns if they are adjudicated as a mental defective or have been committed to a mental institution. The Gun Control Act makes no mention of people being able to declare themselves as mentally unfit to own a firearm. So even by the law's own terms, this is outside, so like you're doubly unconstitutional here if that's a thing. And having a mental condition doesn't make you a prohibited person under the law. You could be depressed, you could have another mental condition, but unless you've been adjudicated as a mental defective by a court, you're not a prohibited person. That's what the law says. It says prohibited person, not I want to give up my rights, not the FBI can make me sign this form. These are very specific legal requirements that just aren't being met as unconstitutional as those legal requirements actually are. So that's basically the rundown of the article, but I think there's a couple other really important questions. One, when did this form start? But two, I'd like to know from the FBI officials themselves who are going around trying to make people sign these forms, what they thought their authority was in this case. Under what legal authority did they think they were operating? Who told them to go from home to home asking people to sign away their rights? What were they gonna do with this information? And what were the investigations that gave rise to them making people or asking people to sign these forms? These are all important questions and I think we're gonna try to dig more into this maybe with more FOIAs, maybe with contacting these uh, agencies to get comment, but this isn't the kind of thing that should just be swept aside. The problem is this process, the FOIA process, takes so long. I mean, you can see, I think we filed this in 2020, right? So we're two years on from that. These things take time, and the problem is there's this cascading effects of unconstitutional laws. I mean, just in the last six or seven months, we've seen rules on frame or receiver. We've seen rules on pistol braces. We've seen, uh, you know, the, the Biden White House doing all sorts of other things from the executive wing rather than the legislative wing. And as far as the legislative wing, we've seen Congress pass gun control with the help of a bunch of Republicans. The point is just because there's new stuff that's happening every day, like the pistol braces and frame or receiver, we can't get distracted from the stuff that might take a few years to get all the answers for. And we're not gonna give up on this, but it's important that we talk about it, even though it's not necessarily the thing that's happening right now. These sorts of authorities, implied authorities, simply breaking the law, just because they stopped, and we don't know why they stopped, that's something else we need to figure out, just because they stopped doesn't mean they won't do it again. So we need to know more about this. And just because it's not the issue of the day doesn't mean it's not important, because if they did it once and they weren't busted, they're gonna do it again. All right, well, that's gonna be it for today. This is sort of a different video for us, and uh, I thought you guys would wanna know. The guys at Daily Caller were just great putting this story out. The guys over at GOA are great for doing the digging on this. Obviously, our legal team, Rob Olson, uh, who uh, did a lot of the work on this to make it happen, you know, should be commended um, for all the work that he was doing, and we're, we're gonna keep fighting this and keep digging. All right, we'll see you next time.